What's up everybody? Today I want to make a video of this plant. This is Erythronium grandiflorum, also known as the yellow avalanche lily or the glacier lily. And it's a really cool plant, so I want to talk about it a bit. So anyways, it's a member of the genus Erythronium, which is a genus of about 20 to 30 species, found mostly in North America, but with six in Eurasia also. And uh, within the United States, you can find it pretty much everywhere except the deep south, the, um, the, the high plains, and the um, sort of desert southwest. And I'm, this species in particular though is found in sort of the northern Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. I'll put a map for both of them up right now. So anyways, this plant is in the true lily family, Liliaceae. Originally, Liliaceae was a huge sprawling family that was quite unwieldy and basically included any insect pollinated monocot that was sort of small and herbaceous like this. And uh, I think for a long time, people realized it was probably not actually a true family on its own, but rather a, a conglomeration of many families. But the uh, first proposal to truly break it up was not received very well, but it also turned out to be mostly true. Anyway, so now a Liliaceae is a it's a rather small family of about 600 species. Back to this plant, as I said, it's a member of Erythronium, and one of the characteristics of Erythronium is that the flowers, once they bloom, start to droop like that. When they first come up, you know, as you can imagine, they're not going to be drooping. They're going to be sort of just coming up straight, as you can see, if I pull this apart right there. And that, that will become a flower eventually. And uh, so, yeah, they, uh, they're not really drooping at first, but then they bloom and they droop and they like most lilies, they got six petals, or let's just say six tepals, which are among them three sepals and three petals, all of which are petaliform, so they might as well be petals in a sense. And they got a six stamens. And also there's an superior ovary right there, which will be mature into a capsule, which is basically a fruit that just releases, it just dries up and releases a bunch of seeds when it opens up. So it's a pretty common type of fruit in the, uh, the plant kingdom, but not one that's typically considered or associated with the edible fruit that we eat. Another thing some of you people might like about this plant is that it's edible. It's got a bulb, which um, if, if you didn't know, a bulb isn't actually a root. It's basically a bunch of leaves that start underground and are swollen to store energy. So an onion, that's a bulb, and that's when you're eating an onion, you're actually just eating a bunch of leaves. So that's kind of interesting. But anyways, the bulb is edible, but um, you know, I'm not really inter interested in foraging at all, so I never tried it. It's probably maybe a bit sweet, I'd imagine, but I know bears like to dig them up in the spring, so I'd say leave them up for, leave them for the bears. <laughs> one thing I like about this plant too is that it's a very early bloomer like this was when I, I was hiking here in like March 3rd it was already starting to come up they weren't blooming at all but there were some starting to you know poke their leaves out the ground and by mid-March they're already starting to bloom and uh like this is only March 4th right here all right not March 4th April 4th and you can see that there's already quite a lot of them blooming right now I guess this is like the peak season for them I think at this elevation at least well then again they also are found at a ton of elevations like they found pretty low down, like 5,000 feet about here to uh, up to like 10,000 feet, I think. You know, hence the name, I guess, Glacier Lily, because they occur high up. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, they've got a really high elevational range and are quite adapted to a lot of habitat. So that's another really cool thing about them. I think they're a really great species and I love seeing them in the spring. I found this one with its petals uh, already wilting, but I already kind of knocked them off, unfortunately. But you can see here, this is the free lobe fruit is already starting to mature. Yeah, another thing about the... Uh, Erythrodium genus, and as well as really a lot of other lilies, is that they got three carpels to them. With the and yeah, you can see the uh, pistil is still attached at the tip. So that's another kind of um, fact about them. And when this matures, it'll be quite a lot larger and just open up with the uh, yeah the seeds just basically falling onto the ground. Also, as a bonus, right here we got a nice lamation dissectum coming up. It's still a little bit young, but it's already quite well on its way to growing tall. And you can e actually you can even see the. Uh, Inflorescence starting to emerge right there. Yeah, that's gonna be its uh, flower stock in a couple of weeks. See, so there's another plant I like. Oh, shoot. Uh, there's quite a lot of Lamatium dissectum coming up just around the trail here. Anyways, yeah, Erythronium grandiflorum is a pretty cool plant, but it's it's really not that rare. It's actually pretty common, and uh, I'm gonna try, I'll try and find some more rare plants at some point, but you know, if it's St. Prime pays, but Bonnie doesn't. I don't got the resources for that stuff yet. And I do appreciate a lot of the really common plants in the Rockies and Wasatch Hills too, so there's that. Well, would you look at this? It's got a Salix species or willow blooming. Not sure what species it is, but uh, that's pretty cool. 